Thank you all for joining today's uh, Launch Academy Scotland briefing webinar. Uh, I will kick start. I've given a couple of minutes for people to join in and uh, really excited to kick start this particular session in partnership with our uh, sponsors who have joined us today to talk more about the technological challenges they've proposed and, uh, and the session later on to discuss the program briefing, the timeline, the details, and the eligibility criteria. Next slide, please, Chris. I'm Rabneet Kaur. I am Senior Technology Acceleration Manager at Offshore Renewable Energy Catapult. Uh, I will be talking about the program overview, uh, how long, what Launch Academy is, and uh, the brief about uh, Launch Academy Scotland. I'll be handing it over to our sponsors to talk about uh, their live projects. And um, and also the importance of the joining the program. I'll be handing it then to a quiz. Sorry, um, there was a slight distraction with the internet here. Uh, then I'll be handing it over to Chris, who will be talking about the uh, Scotland Launch Academy details and key dates um, for the participant, and we'll then move on to Q&A later on. Chris, can we move to the next slide, please? Uh, Launch Academy is our uh, off uh, offshore renewable energy catapults flagship program. Um, uh, offshore renewable energy catapult is a leading technology and innovation research center organization headquarters in Glasgow and has offices all around the UK. Uh, we have uh, the mission to accelerate uh, the clean and uh, renewable uh, growth for UK companies in the renewable sector. Uh, we are, have nearly 300 million pounds of research and technology capabilities to do the testing at our centers in Blythe, Aberdeen, and in Humber. Um, we uh, basically work towards supporting the UK economy to grow in offshore renewable sector, enabling the transition for low carbon economy and really supporting the uh, supply chain and SMEs and innovators to be participating in the growth of offshore renewable sector. Um, next slide, please. Um, uh, Owari uh, Catapult created this program based on our experience of working with the supply chain over the last 10 years. And this is um, this particular Launch Academy program is an accelerator program de designed to enhance UK's offshore wind supply chain, um, enable more uh, and better UK content and support for the reduction of uh, uh, levelized cost of energy by identifying innovative solutions to the real world industry problems by bringing in the um, bringing in the industry partners to support the program. Um, offshore renewable sector holds immense uh, potential and in meeting the global demand, thus uh, making sure that the supply chain is able to capitalize on the opportunity is critical and key for further uh, enhancing and developing the uh, offshore renewable sector. This particular program is a combination of working with industry as well as the uh, professional services experts to bring business support as well as the technology support uh, under one roof. Uh, this particular program enhances uh, collaboration uh, and makes sure that the uh, development of the innovations is in the right direction to be able to commercialize the uh, solutions uh, when, uh, as and when they are ready. The program supports 10 companies to go through the program over a period of seven months. Uh, and over the seven months, companies are provided with various expert uh, business development and technology development uh, modules. Uh, which Chris will be talking about later on in the webinar uh, and um, 
where he'll be describing all the modules and the support uh, on offer on the program. Chris, next slide, please. So um, uh, Launch Academy uh, is basically aims to foster innovation, collaboration, and entrepreneurship in offshore wind sector. We are here to help the supply chain and uh, entrepreneurs and startups to transform their uh, indigenous ideas and into scalable and impactful and sustainable solution. Uh, the program has uh, gone ahead to one uh, couple of industry recognized awards. Uh, and not only the program as a whole, but the companies who've gone through the program over the last uh, four years have also gone to win uh, awards. And that is a huge validation for the support provided through the program. I will be talking about the impact generated by the program later on, but I, uh, I just wanted to highlight on this particular uh, slide that uh, this particular program not only relies on us as delivery partners, but is mainly is a collaborative effort uh, working with the industry partners and the supply chain and facilitating that uh, relationship between uh, the peers as well and colle uh, collectively uh, really have a win-win approach uh, to support the sector to grow. So as much as it is uh, offshore renewable energy capital delivering this program, the success of this program entirely depends on the supply chain companies coming on board and uh, our exceptional partners who make it happen in, uh, by supporting the program. Next slide, please, Chris. Um, as I said, uh, this particular slide uh, emphasizes on the impact created by the uh, 47 companies we have supported thus far through the program. Uh, collectively, the companies have raised uh, nearly 26 million pounds of investment over the last four years. Uh, obviously, at, uh, there are different companies at different stages of development and growth who have collectively been able to raise that amount of funding um, but it goes to show what uh, the interventions can really help and enable the companies to achieve the companies have collectively patented 150 patents uh, during during the course of the program um, companies have been uh, further uh, companies have uh, supported are uh, nearly 57 grants have been awarded to the companies. Um, these are not only the metrics which we count on during the course of the program, but post the program as well, we keep in touch with the companies and get in touch with them to understand where they are post program as well. So this kind of includes the um, impact created post program as well. Uh, the number of product and services com commercialized, uh, new product and services uh, commercialized during the programs are nearly 21. Uh, the companies have um, been able to get more employees onboarded. Uh, the headcount increase is nearly 49. And the companies have uh, further expanded their business and growth uh, operational basis by eight. So it uh, collectively, I think it achieve, achieves far and beyond um, the initial uh, efforts of the companies just goes to show the amount of um, work the companies do through the program to be able to achieve those kind of target numbers. On the right, we see nearly 10 companies have actually uh, come through the program are Scottish as well. We'll be hearing later on from Worldloom as one of our alumni company about their experience of being on the program and how they have achieved uh, beyond the course of the program as well. Next slide, please, Chris. We have delivered nearly um, eight programs now. So we are in, in the course of in set, uh, set of phase for the eighth one. Uh, this just kind of goes to show over the last four years how we have developed the programs and um, not only we have delivered national programs, but we will deliver regional programs. We have delivered one in northeast of England, one in east of England, and this is the third of the series in the regional program which we are launching today. Um, and, and talking about the Scotland Launch Academy, 
uh, and later in the year we'll be uh, launching national uh, cohort five uh, launch academy too. Next slide, please, Chris. So why Scotland? Uh, Scotland, uh, I think uh, it will be fair for me to say it's not a region. It's obviously a country of its own, but the potential is far and wide for offshore wind sector. Uh, 45 gigawatts of uh, offshore wind is in uh, pipeline in one or the other stage of development um, uh, process for for the sector and uh, it is uh, an immense uh, it has immense potential of growth as well um, but uh, the growth has to be matched by the supply chain development as well and through launch academy our effort is to support and identify new innovations uh, that can really help develop the sector at a much faster pace and also contribute to further reduction of the cost uh, the advancement in technology is critical to achieve the ambitious target uh, UK has set up, but not only UK, but a uh, global opportunity for offshore wind is uh, ever growing and it is growing at a much faster pace. So by this program, we aim to support uh, the companies based out in Scotland to capitalize on the opportunity here. Uh, at home, but also um, be able to uh, capitalize on the opportunity which this, uh, this sector offers globally. Chris, next slide, please. Now I'll be handing over to the uh, partner sponsors uh, to talk about uh, their ambitions uh, and also the reasons for their joining the Launch Academy program. I'll be handing it over to Lindsay Shublin from uh, Ocean Winds next. Thank you. Thanks, Ravneet. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining the session. My main message is register for this program. It is brilliant, it is transformational, and it is a fabulous opportunity for the supply chain. So if you remember nothing else, apply. Um, I am the supply chain engagement lead for Ocean Winds and we have almost six gigawatts of energy in Scotland. Um, Chris, if you could move on a couple of slides for me, please. As you can see on the map, we're based predominantly up in the Murray Firth. We've got a decade of experience in developing projects there and we have two projects which are combined off the coast of Shetland as well. Um, we have left a legacy in those areas through our bases at Fraserburgh with Ops and Maintenance and also at Bucky where we're developing a new Ops and Maintenance base as well. For the next slide, please. The four projects that we have um, in the UK, but that are based in Scotland. Murray East is a 950 megawatt project, which is fixed um, and it first produced power in 2021. A significant amount of work was done during the pandemic to deliver that project. So we're used to working with challenges and always looking for innovative solutions. Murray West is our project in um, construction at the moment. It's 882 megawatts and it produced its first power in July this year. So we're really proud as a team of how quickly that project has progressed. Caledonia is one of our Scotland sites that we won. This is a two gigawatt fixed site with some elements of floating. Um, it's close to shore, so we'll be using AC transmission and it comes with a 46 million pound supply chain enabling fund. Part of that is being used to sponsor this program and we are absolutely looking to increase our Scottish content and to maximize the innovation in Scotland for local solutions for our local projects. We also have the Arvin project, 2.3 gigawatts off the coast of Shetland, and we're expecting that one to be operational early 2030s. Next slide, please. We have a very strong history at Ocean Winds of engaging with the local supply chain, particularly in Scotland and the UK. Um, we've recently just published a document uh, showcasing all our local suppliers. So you can see on the map there um, the kind of populated areas and particularly our footprint in the northeast of Scotland and the um, Forth and Tay area of Scotland, which aligns really nice with the offshore wind clusters, Deep Wind and Forth and Tay offshore. So a shout out to them if you're not already a member, go and join the clusters because they're brilliant at finding out lots of great initiatives that are happening and connecting you to the right support. 
If you'd like to find out more about the document, it's linked in this brochure. I think the slide pack's been sent out, um, but you can also find it on our social media channels as well. We'd love to add your dot onto this map. So I really do hope you apply so that we can work with you more. If you'd like to join as a supplier, you can go onto our website and re register on our vendor portal as well and tell us the services that you think you can help us with. To the next slide, please, Chris. As I mentioned, it's Caledonia that will be sponsoring this project in particular, given it's our next project in development. Um, we're aiming for onshore, onshore construction in uh, 2027, offshore construction 2028, and to have first power in 2030. So as a project, this one is going to be moving at pace. As part of our Scotland bid, we had to put a proposal together to see what impact we would have on the supply chain. And the biggest one we want to make is 60% of our project expenditure being UK content, and of that, 30% of that in Scotland. You'll see the numbers on the left. So we've got 1.829 million for Scottish expenditure. And if the supply chain was capable and ready, we think that could increase to 1.1 81 million pounds, so 1.8 billion pounds. Um, an area where we really want to, to focus our attention is fabrication. We think this is an area that um, there's an opportunity for growth in Scotland that will take investment in skills and the supply chain. And this links to one of our challenges around manufacturing. Um, but we also want to make sure that um, our supply chains are sustainable. And that feeds into local content, having local suppliers make it more reliable, but also reducing our carbon footprints as well and it, increasing our um, relationships and engagement with local suppliers. Next slide, please, Chris. So the challenges that we've had as the developers were working across all the challenges and the offshore renewable energy catapults have very kindly bundled this up into lovely little packages. Um, so our one is the future energy systems. And for us, what we are looking for in innovative solutions. Now, please take these as suggestions because if you've got a great idea, we want to hear it. But as a starter for 10, supply chain decarbonisation. This particularly links to some of the policy stuff where we're having to align, record um, and evidence our impacts on supply chain in terms of sustainable materials, local suppliers, uh, innovative components, using energy efficient manufacturing processes as well. So this is really important to us and being able to demonstrate um, sustainability throughout our supply chains, and that is top to bottom and all the way side to side. This is going to be a growing expectation of our suppliers, and I think this is one that will be shared by all the developers, so it's an area of significant interest. The second area is manufacturing innovation. If you can make it, we want to know how, we want to work with you, we're always looking for solutions, bigger, better, faster. Um, so manufacturing technologies, novel processes, and anything that can increase the capability um, for manufacturing. Um, these are the areas particularly of interest to ocean winds, um, but we also have the, the open category as well. So if while we're all speaking today, there's something that you've got a great idea and it doesn't quite fit in these boxes, please submit it and let us know. I think that's the end of my five minutes, um, unless Chris moves to another slide that I wasn't expecting. Um, great. Um, and the benefit of supporting this programme, one, it is to enhance the capabilities of Scottish businesses. We see that it's going to benefit us in terms of securing our local content targets. We want to aim to gain early access to cross-cutting solutions and to work with SMEs in Scotland to help them accelerate their business journeys. This fit for uh, sorry, the Lunch Academy program, it's it's got brilliant modules and um, it, it's such a great opportunity that I really do hope you apply. And if you need any support, the whole team is behind you. Um, I've been lucky to see this programme in a few different versions and reiterations, and it continues to evolve and grow and really is such a valuable opportunity for Scottish businesses. Um, thank you for your time. If you've got any questions, pop them in the chat box. I'm happy to answer them or to take questions at the end if there's time. Thank you. Okay, over, over to me then. Um, hi everyone, good afternoon. Thanks very much for joining. Um, my name is Kirsty Adams. For those who, who don't know me, nice to meet you. 
Um, I'm head of supply chain for the Blue Float Nadara partnership. Um, and we have actually just kind of hot off the press, I guess, in the last couple of weeks, we've rebranded. Um, so you may have, have known us previously as the Blue Flow Energy um, Renantis Partnership, um, but we are now the Blue Flow Energy Nadara Partnership. And I'll go into why that is in my slides. So if you could move on to the slides, please, Chris. Thank you. So I suppose kicking off with who we are, um, you know, we're, we're relatively new player in offshore wind in the UK. Um, we were successful with um, some Scott wind sites and some Intog sites, which I'll go on to speak to about in a moment. But first, just maybe a little bit of information on who the, the partners are. Um, so we're a 50-50 joint venture between Blue Float Energy and Nadara. In terms of Blue Float Energy, they're a global um, offshore wind developer. They have over 34, 34 gigawatts of, of projects in different stages within the development stage, but all pretty early development um, opportunities around the globe. And this map just kind of indicates really how much uh, coverage Blue Float Energy have in the globe just now. Um, the most, I would say the most um, kind of advanced projects within that portfolio are those in Scotland and those in Italy um, that you can see there, which are with our partners Nadara and also one of the projects with Orsted. Um, if you maybe move on to the next slide, please, Chris, and I'll just go in a little bit into Nadara. Um, so Nadara recently, uh, as I say, rebranded from Renantis, and that was in the back of a merger between um, Renantis and uh, Ventian Energy. So Ventian Energy and, Renan and Renantis have come together to create uh, Nadara. They have over a thousand employees um, across the globe. Um, they've got an installed capacity of about 4.2 uh, gigawatts, and they are predominantly working across um, a number of technologies in the renewable space, such as offshore wind, onshore wind, um, solar PV, uh, biomass, uh, waste from energy, and energy storage as well. Um, in terms of offshore wind, the portfolio is exclusively with uh, Blue Flow Energy. So this is just kind of highlighting where Nadara's offshore opportunities are at the moment. Um, and you'll see the kind of UK is what I'm focusing on and, and more, more specifically the, the Scottish projects um, just up there on the, the top of the screen. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, Chris, moving on to the next slide, I'll just talk about them in a bit more detail. Um, yeah, so our portfolio at the moment, we've got five projects in Scotland. Um, Stromar, which is a, a joint venture between Blue Flow Energy, Nadara and Orsted. And the partners, they are all um, own in terms of ownership. It's 33% each. So it's a completely even joint venture. Um, and then the other four projects, Sinclair, Scarabin, Broadshore and Bellrock, are a 50-50 joint venture between Blue Flow Energy and Nadara. Um, so I look after the four projects there in terms of Stromar. I have a colleague, uh, Julian Das, who looks after the supply chain for that and happy to put anyone in contact with Julian after the call if, if needs be. Um, in terms of what we're talking about today, so Bellrock, um, all of these projects, I should say, are, are floating offshore wind. Uh, Bellrock's a 1.2 gigawatt project. Uh, Broadshore is 900 megawatts. And then Sinclair and Scarabin, which is probably what we'll the kind of focus of, of today and, and why we are um, sponsoring Launch Academy. Um, they're both under 100 megawatts each and we secured those projects during the INTOG round um, that Crown Estate Scotland ran um, and, and announced the, the successful participants last year. Um, so we've won those on the basis of the innovation section of that round and hence why we're keen to speak to suppliers about um, innovative ideas, basically. Um, so floating offshore wind, as everyone knows, you know, it's, it's very new. Um, there's a few demonstrator projects around around the globe at the moment, but we don't really have, you know, that kind of real large scale um, size projects, which which has we've seen come through uh, Scotland. So in TOG for us, we're looking to kind of ring fence those projects in Clare and Scarabin. Um, to kind of test and, and I guess, uh, challenge and, and push boundaries in terms of innovation. Uh, floating offshore wind, I think, in, term, in terms of 
trying to make it efficient, trying to make it, you know, cost effective um, and trying to deliver these at pace. We, we're going to have to maximise and, and profit from the innovation that we have. So why we've spons uh, sponsored Launch Academy, particularly for this Scottish cohort, um, we view Scotland as, as having a naturally kind of innovative um, background. You know, we've seen it in terms of uh, just generally. Um, we're, we're good at inventing things and we're good at innovating and we've got a really rich, um, innovative culture. So we are confident that we will see lots of great ideas and lots of great companies coming through to help us really um, try and address some of these challenges that we have. In terms of the programme itself, um, yeah, it's floating offshore wind. We're looking to, you know, um, look for opportunities where we can, kind of really push the boundaries in terms of innovation um, and also learn, you know, some of that kind of um, heritage that we have, you know, perhaps from oil and gas and what the floating market can take learnings from there. Um, so, yeah, really excited to sponsor the programme, the first cohort in Scotland. Um, we think it will deliver um, a really successful outcome for our Sinclair and Scarabin projects to then be able to potentially apply some of those innovations onto Broadshore and Bell Rock as well. Um, next slide, please, Chris, I'll maybe just go through some of the time scales that we've got. So at the moment, we're still waiting on certainty around grid connections. So everything here is kind of subject to the outcome of that holistic network design process that National Grid are running at the moment. However, we are developing the projects kind of full steam ahead. Um, we submitted our scoping reports for um, all projects this year and, and we had a, a, a good outcome with those and we're currently working um, towards the environmental impact assessment um, section of our consent. We're looking to have that closed off and submitted by the end of this year um, and in parallel to that we're doing a lot of engineering works and trying to figure out um, what our concept selection will be for the, the floating technology itself. Um, and this is where we think that it's a great time to sponsor such a programme like this when, you know, we're at very early stages and we have that opportunity to really profit from some of the knowledge and, and experience and expertise that that the the companies like yourselves can can bring to that. Um, so we we're working towards our consent application um, next year with hopefully a successful outcome uh, the year after. Um, and then we'll go into our kind of feed feed design and detailed engineering work. So, yeah, between now and then, we're hoping to to really nail down some of these potential innovations that we can work into our projects to make them a success. In terms of the build of the projects, uh, generally we're looking to commence construction in 2029 um, and first power around about 2031. That will be for the first projects um, within our portfolio. And then we'll hope to hopefully kind of develop them as sequentially afterwards um, and stagger them in terms of uh, construction and build out. Um, so I think that's probably all from me um, in terms of, yeah, as I said, just really excited to develop this programme and really looking forward to working with um, those of you who, who kind of apply and, and are successful in terms of getting a, a place. So, yes, that's all from me. Hi, sorry, slight delay there. Um, my name, thanks very much for that, Kirsty, and um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sue Vincent, and um, I look after the stakeholder and um, stakeholder engagement and communications. And um, I say to people everything everyone else doesn't want to do for Inchcape project, um, and part of that includes supply chain plan commitments, um, and specifically for uh, the Launch Academy Scotland, I'm working very closely with our um, internal innovation champion called Shane Macken, who will be working with the um, successful companies um, throughout the, the Launch Academy program. Um, this photo I, I just wanted to share with you um, because it shows um, in one photo where we are um, with the project in terms of the offshore construction. In the far corner, you can see our um, 
top side um, being built um, on the vessel is our um, one of our tra offshore transformers um, being loaded. Um, uh, this is at Wall's End, by the way, um, Smolders Yard, and then uh, the yellow uh, top. That's the top of our jacket. So it's kind of a snapshot of Inch Cape at the moment. Um, next slide, please, Chris. Um, for those of you who don't know uh, Inch Cape, though it's been around for a really long time, um, we're 15 kilometres, or we're sort of 12 to 15 kilometres off the Angus coast. Um, we have an 85 kilometre export cable that will bring the power to shore at Kakenzie in East Lothian. And our o &M base is going to be at Montrose. Um, next slide, please, Chris. Uh, so it's 1.1 gigawatts, actually 1.080, um, and um, it's going to have a mix of jacket foundations and monofile foundations. Um, water depths are roughly 38 to 59 metres, um, and so we, we're kind of going for this mix of technologies. Um, one offshore substation, and then, as I said, the 85-kilometre export cable bringing the power to shore at a new substation, which is um, currently under construction. Uh, next slide, please, Chris. So, so giving an overview, it's roughly three and a half billion pound investment in, in the infrastructure in the UK. Um, we've already invested over the over the last 14 years um, around about 307 to a million with 290 UK companies. So a lot of companies covering a massive range of different skill sets. And of that, almost 100 million in Scotland with almost 120 companies here. Um, once we're built, it will be roughly 10% of the um, Scottish government's offshore wind ambition. Um, and uh, one of the things that is really great about Inch Cap is it's an efficient use of a brown brownfield site and it's and it's right on the coast so we don't have one of those um pesky long um uh, onshore cable corridors and also we have an existing grid um connection which again is another really big bonus about this project um many thousands of jobs being created at the moment um and it's we will be um starting work next year on our new new o m base in port of montrose um, which is roughly 50 long-term jobs. And, um, yep, yeah, enough green electricity for roughly half the, half the homes in Scotland. Uh, next slide. Thanks, Chris. Um, to give a um, sort of high-level overview of where we are, we've, we've had our bank launch this year and we are appointing our main contractors and we're due for financial close towards the end of the year. It's a slightly um, quirky project because usually you would have financial close before you start construction, um, but we have already started due to um, time, time frames, program, program requirements, so forth. But um, after financial close, we're expecting to specifically ramp up offshore with export cable installation and offshore substation installation next year, and then the foundations in 2026 and um, uh, full operation after the wind turbines are installed 2027. Uh, next slide, please, Chris. And um, so where we are, we um, um, got contracts for CFD in uh, 2022, and Last year, we started offshore construction. You can see um, that is our static bar compensator building in the top um, photo. That's at Kikensi. Um, and um, it's uh, the site of the former coal fire power station that was there. So it's kind of a nice circular story, I think, um, in Cape. And then a little bit more of a close up of the top side progress, which is in the bottom picture. Um, it's it's a um, Siemens Energy OTM um, uh, technology. And we've got roughly, there's about 110 in our team, in our Inchicape team. Um, I, do, I don't think it's any secret that it's been a challenging process, but um, we, we were, you know, pretty well on track and set for financial close later in the year. Um, yeah, next slide, Chris. Um, so I thought I would just cover a couple of the sort of handful of the innovations on the project so far, um, maybe to be to be inspiring. Um, we're using the Vestas 15 megawatt turbine, which will be the largest in the UK um, when they're installed and, and until the next largest come along. Um, it's 
going to get roughly to 75 meters tall, which I think is 20 meters taller than Arthur's seat, which the primary school um, students like that fact when they give them that one. Um, then another um, uh, innovation is the offshore transform module that I mentioned previously, and um, also our um, using this particular AC transformer, um, you can see a picture of its factory acceptance test there with the lightning simulator. Um, and yeah, largest ever for a UK offshore wind farm. Um, next slide. Thanks, Chris. Um, so some more innovations. We've got the largest ever um, AC export cable, uh, picture of on the top right there. Um, it's 20 millimeter diameter and it will have six roughly 14 kilometer sections. Um, and then our um, foundations are massive, just a picture of Wembley to give the kind of an indication of the length of those, um, two and a half thousand tons and um, up to 104 meters in length. Um, next slide, please. Um, and so I guess the idea for showing you those um, you know, the innovations that we've already um, sort of got into in the project was to say that we still we believe that there's still a massive potential for innovation and it's not just for our project, um, but also for the wider offshore industry. Um, and Scotland, you know, should really be at the forefront of that because of the, the mix of the energy heritage combined with um, this great healthy future development pipeline. So we've... Um, so sort of dedicated support for this um, this inaugural Scottish Launch Academy to really it's to support elements of what we might be doing with particularly R and M, but also I, I would say it's looking to pay it forward in terms of um, looking at innovations that can help the wider sector. And I think the tricky thing with with innovation is that you you want to innovate almost before you, you know, before you constructing. So there's a little bit of a time lag. So I think with us in the in the stage that we are now, many of the the innovations are, are likely to be on future projects. Um, but I think that's just the the nature of the of the sector. Um, but specifically, the things that we're looking for is. Um, carbon emissions reduction innovations, um, and then looking at around sustainability and environmental improvement, particularly for the OM phase, and um, better environmental data capture and analysis. And there's um, some examples here, by no means um, in instructive or prescriptive, just something to kind of give an indication um, of, of what we felt could be useful or could be kind of out there on the drawing board. So zero low carbon vessels, um, remote monitoring. We, we've been talking to quite a number of different companies with um, beyond visual line of sight um, concepts and um, new sort of use of underwater um, vessels. Um, yeah, so there's lots of, I think, scope there. Um, surface coatings and protections we felt was an interesting area and also logistics and planning and coordinate coordination. So sort of improving efficiencies to reduce um, carbon emissions. And then um, our second kind of key focus area is environmental monitoring and mitigation methodologies, which is quite a mouthful. And um, it's it's quite broad, but model you, novel use of platforms, um, monitoring, you know, sort of innovative techniques and equipment, and also um, similar to above with kind of data, um, you know, improvements through better use of data and digital um, implementation. Um, next slide. I think that might actually be my nearly last one. Just unless you want to have some more information about us, um, we have all of these different um, ways of finding out more or getting in contact with us. We also have a supply supply registration portal, um, which is being um, updated and um, a new version should actually be launched next month, all being well. Um, but to um, reiterate what both Lindsay and Kirsty have said, I really hope to see some great um, applications for, for the Launch Academy and um, and quite excited to see what comes in. So, yep, that's it for me, thanks.
Hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Adam Swainbank. I'm one of the offshore wind supply chain specialists here at Scottish Enterprise. Along with my work colleagues, we're a team of about 10. Um, I am conscious of time because I do know that Chris has also got to present on the main Launch Academy programme as well. So um, I'll try and whiz through um, some of these slides. Next slide, please, Chris. So Scottish Enterprise, we are the economic agency in Scotland, along with uh, South of Scotland Enterprise and Highlands and Islands Enterprise. Roughly, we're around 1,300 staff in total, and we invest around £300 million a year into the economy through a number of different mechanisms, um, including into uh, small and startup companies. We have a team overseas of about 250 staff, which attract inward investment into Scotland, also work on trade activities for companies looking to export. Uh, and we have around about 450 staff supporting company growth and innovation and infrastructure. Next slide, please, Chris. So this just gives a very brief overview of what Scottish Enterprise does um, as a um, economic agency, working with companies. We offer a number of different products and services for companies wishing to grow and expand. Those companies can be from startups through to SMEs and through to larger companies as well. Um, some of the, the support services that we have include the um, Scottish Manufacturing Advisory Service for manufacturing companies that are looking to improve their productivity and manufacturing performance. Uh, we have digital transformation support, uh, sustainable and net zero uh, for companies which are looking to improve their energy efficiency. We also have innovation programs as well, and the Launch Academy is part of that innovation package that we offer. Um, there's other support services as well that you can tap into, which include intellectual property. Uh, we've got a research department, and we also invest in companies, as I said before. So just to take away from this, that we have a number of, of support services that you can tap into if you're based in the SE region, which is that central belt and then runs up to Aberdeen and up to Peterhead. That's, that's, the, that's the companies that can, we can work with. Um, please do get in contact later with the contact details. Next slide, please, Chris. So as part of the Scottish Enterprise um, um, Agency, we have a offshore wind team. We're a team of about 10. Uh, we were set up around about two years ago. I'm one of the supply chain specialists along with my uh, work colleague, Laura. We also have um, 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 some of our team work with the developers and uh, we have people that engage with stakeholders. So really important that we understand what the developers needs are, their needs, aspirations and challenges. And we can try and build that supply chain support around them. One of the things that we've done recently is we've produced some manufacturing fact sheets, which have been very successful. They're on the Offshore Wind Scotland website. I would recommend any companies that are interested in that manufacturing side of things, please go onto the website and have a look at them. It does give some useful information. Um, we also attract capital investment into Scotland. We all know that key to um, supply chain development is attracting tier ones into um, Scotland. So that's a really important part for us. And then we also work with the ports as well. That um, The ports are a key to unlocking all of this. If we don't have good port infrastructure, we won't be rolling out offshore wind farms. Um, innovation I've talked about, uh, which Launch Academy is part of that. And I've also mentioned um, the attracting investment, which is really important. Chris, next slide, please. We are a Team Scotland approach. So Hi, Sozi and Scottish Enterprise work together. Uh, we've decided to work together collectively on offshore wind rather than pulling apart. I think that's easier for the supply chain to work with us and um, it makes it a little bit more streamlined. Um, we do also work closely with SOEC and the strategic investment model, which I presume a lot of you have heard about, which is the opportunity um, for um, projects to go ahead in Scotland, which have got significant manufacturing or infrastructure needs. We also have good stakeholder engagement as well. So we work with the likes of the Catapult, the Energy Transition Zone, uh, the Net Zero um, Technology Centre and the Floating Offshore Wind Centre of Excellence. Next slide, please, Chris. So this is the high slides. I don't work for high, so I'm going to caveat that I don't know exactly all of the products and services that high use, but these slides are in just to give you a flavor of any companies that are based in the high region. You can also tap into their services as well. It is a different agency, but as I said, we all work together collectively for the benefit of the supply chain and ensuring that we maximize local content and offshore wind. This is, this is the high local and regional offices. Um, as you can see, that's where they're split. 
geographically um, in Scotland. Next slide, please, Chris. And then just some of the support services that we've got. So it's split into people, place, planet and prosperity and some of the services, again, which are similar to Scottish Enterprise, can include things like skills, talent attraction, infrastructure investment, improving creativity, um, renewable energy development, um, including hydrogen and um, sustainable transport. And then on the prosperity side of things, you've got sector and supply chain development support, attracting inward investment and trade and advanced manufacturing and um, digital tech improvement for companies. Uh, next slide, please, Chris. I think there's, may I think there's maybe one more. Um, yeah, contacts. So these are the contacts. You can, you can reach out to any of us here. I've only put three on because I didn't want to um, bamboozle you with lots of different contacts. What I would say is that Scottish Enterprise and the rest of the economic agencies are a sleeping partner in this. So we don't actually have innovation themes um, for you to actually bid into. That is down to the developers that have decided that. But we are here as an economic agency to support the supply chain. So if there's anything that you need from a growth perspective, anything that you need from a business support perspective, please do reach out to your um, respective um, agencies, depending where you're based in Scotland. I'll leave it there, Chris, because I'm conscious you've got to now take over. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you to the industry sponsors there for their presentations. Definitely an exciting time to be working in the Scottish offshore wind uh, sector. So in terms of the alumni testimony, testimonial that I'm going to do today, my name is Grace Ann Robertson and I am marketing manager at a company called Verloom, who recently took part in the Launch Academy programme. So in terms of a bit of a, a background as to why we applied to the Launch Academy programme, as a business, we are a specialist in intelligent energy management and energy storage. And we had a product named Halo that we'd developed for seabed power delivery in deep water offshore environments. Um, and we'd been working with RWE on a Dutch offshore wind uh, project around uh, alternative product to Halo named Aura, which was specifically developed for the shallower waters um, that we typically see um, fixed offshore wind operating within. And what we wanted to do was to really develop our knowledge and understanding of the offshore wind market and where we could find um, the Aura product sort of sitting and the use cases for that in terms of improving the general efficiency of offshore wind farms through energy storage. So being part of the Launch Academy was a really positive experience for us through the seven months that we took part in the programme. Um, we would definitely recommend it to other SME innovators who are looking to expand into the offshore wind sector. So I've just got some points to share around um, pieces that we thought were of particular interest to us throughout the programme. So the first one was the team learning opportunities. So there were a number of webinars that were delivered um, and were made accessible to all members of the Verloom team, including an offer Wind 101, inclusion, diversity and culture, um, a piece around stronger stories and marketing and also around technology development. We were put into contact with uh, the law firm Shepherd and Wedderburn, who uh, worked to de-risk our rental model and reviewed our contract structure for how we would deliver the product in the offshore wind market. Um, we were involved in a number of events, including a showcase event, on the Aura technology, which allowed us to really hone and develop our pitch as to what the product was um, offering to the market. Um, another 
a good thing that we experienced were the one-to-one -one meetings with developers um, and the industry sponsors, which was really useful to us. Um, and that engagement has continued uh, since we've graduated from the programme as well. We also felt that we were part of a community as part of the programme. There were obviously other companies involved on it at the same time as us who we were able to connect in with and develop connections with as well. Um, and a final point on the kind of profile piece in the media is that it's great to be involved with the programme in terms of raising the profile of your product and your company. So in general, I would really recommend um, having a look into Launch Academy. And if you do have any questions on the application process or any other questions, don't hesitate to, to get in touch. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Grace Anne, for that that lovely testimonial review of your experience as Verloom on the Launch Academy program. Um, obviously, you graduated December of last year, now seven, eight months on. It, it's we, we really appreciate you spending some time today to come and kind of share your experiences on the program. Now, as Adam intimated, we have severely went over on time as planned. I'm going to whiz through these slides here, giving some real information associated with the Launch Academy Sp Scotland programme in particular. And then if we've got time at the end, we'll move into a QA. and a um, Please drop any questions in the chat that you have associated with the programme whilst I'm talking. Um, we'll answer as many as we can and any that we don't answer, we will circulate answers to after the webinar. Um, once we share the recording of this session, it will be posted live on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, you'll be able to find it on our website and obviously the partners will be sharing it throughout their networks too. So you'll be able to revisit this session in the future um, if you want to revisit or capture any, any information you might have missed. So firstly, uh, you, you might have saw some of the technology themes and challenges that some of our industry sponsors have discussed throughout this session. Uh, you'll see that we've got three fantastic technology themes and challenge areas that are that we're we're directly seeking innovations and solutions uh, that target each of these throughout this Launch Academy Scotland program. Um, you'll see that obviously the, the Smart O&M theme very, very uh, neatly aligns with the Inchcape Offshore Wind Farms uh, ambitions. Likewise, Future Energy Systems is very closely linked to ocean winds and, and their own innovation priorities. And finally, Floating Wind is, has, a, has a very direct link to the, the priorities uh, articulated by Kirsty earlier on for Bluefoot Energy Nadara. Um, now, all of these challenge areas, whilst each, each of our industry sponsors has a, spe a specific interest in one particular area, we are inviting all solutions to come through and, and all uh, industry sponsors and program partners will engage with all solutions relevant to any of the given areas. So you'll see the three specific ones around smart O&M, future energy systems and floating wind, in addition to an open call. Now, just to be clear, for in terms of eligibility for the program, you must be a Scottish startup or SME. You, you need to have a base in Scotland, activity in Scotland. And if you don't have either of those, we really need to see some strong uh, strong indications of your ambitions within Scotland. Will you be establishing a base in Scotland? Will you be developing a team or growing your activity in Scotland? That's something we really need to see. Secondly, we uh, any companies supplying must be seeking to commercialise a new product or service into the offshore wind sector. Moving on, the Launch Academy programme itself, um, it's a seven month programme as discussed previously and the support provided through the programme is delivered through a variety of modules indicated on this screen here. Each of the modules delivered falls neatly into kind of three pillar areas as, as we see it as such. One uh, being specialised industry knowledge, two business growth expertise and third professional services. So there's a number of modules that fit into each pillar here and those are delivered by a cadre of really fantastic program partners, uh, delivery partners, in addition to Ori Catable and the, and the broader uh, industry sponsors who are linked with this specific program. So if we're looking towards Launch Academy Scotland in particular and the delivery partners that will be associated with the program, you'll see in the, in the left here, um, the specialized industry knowledge will be delivered by ourselves in collaboration with our industry sponsors and partners. 
Business growth expertise will be delivered by, uh, in part ourselves, also supported by Innovate UK and UKRI and the Department for Business and Trade. You'll see there's two boxes here, market, marketing and storytelling strategy and the value proposition and investor readiness modules. Those are currently in the midst of a tender process so that we have a number of partners that are very, very exciting and will and one of them will succeed and, and win the contract to, be, to delivering this work. Um, though we cannot confirm who those partners are at this time. This also goes for our quality, diversity and inclusion strategy module in the professional services box. But we have, as you can see, some really fantastic partners providing all sorts of expertise and wraparound support throughout the seven month programme for Launch Academy Scotland. Um, I've already briefly touched on eligibility but just to reiterate, you must be registered in the UK, currently operating in Scotland, or intend to establish a base and or activity within Scotland. Um, ideally, you're a startup or early stage company, um, and you have to be seeking to develop and commercialize a new product or service into the offshore wind sector. Um, the application process will ask you to demonstrate how participation in Launch Academy will affect your business, and the solution you're developing must fall within TRLs three to eight. Then finally, the application process itself, just some really brief details. It should be reasonably straightforward, but just to, to kind of highlight and reiterate how it might work. So there's the technology themes that we've already shared previously, in addition to our open call. All companies that are, that, that, that are even slightly interested in the program, we really urge you to apply and you'll be able to indicate which challenges in particular your solution that you're developing might apply to, but you're also welcome to apply to as many as you like because we, we understand various solutions might target various challenges that that we uh, as Royal Catapult and then the broader industry are seeing in the in the sector at large. Um, so stage one of the application process, uh, it's a written application. If you navigate to the Launch Academy Scotland webpage on the Ori Catapult website, you'll be able to access the application and apply directly from there. Uh, when we circulate these slides after the session, uh, you'll see at the bottom here, there's a link also that takes you directly to the, the Launch Academy Scotland land page. Applications, uh, sorry, the deadline for applications is the 16th of August. So you've got a few weeks before we close the application phase. Um, once you click apply, you'll be rerouted to an application form. This is a Microsoft uh, Microsoft form, and there's a number of questions in there that are that we'll be asking for you to provide information associated with either your basic details associated with your company, uh, which theme or themes are you applying for, and then to provide some really direct information around what is the technology or the solution you're developing, how much development have you done to date, and what are you planning to do in, in the next six months, year, two years, etc. Broader information around your, your organization in terms of size uh, and the team and the resources you have available, as well as the perhaps your, your vision and the business model associated with the, the, develop, the innovation that you're developing. Then finally, a little bit of information on what it is you wish to achieve and why are you a Launch Academy, in particular, Launch Academy company in particular. Now, just to note, the Microsoft Forms application form does not have a save and return function or feature. So you won't be able to start the application and then, I don't know, um, close it and return to it at a later date. You'll lose any any progress you had uh, uh, in completing that form. And, so, and sometimes it can take a little bit of time to develop or provide all the information that we're, we're asking for um, as uh, shown at, at the second stage here. So there's a downloadable supporting document available, which you can download. It's a Microsoft Word document and it contains all of the questions associated in, with the application form um, for you to peruse uh, at your leisure. You can kind of populate that as you go um, and, and, and keep it on your, your drive. And then once you're ready to, to formally apply and input all that data into the actual application form, uh, you can essentially just copy and paste. So, so that supporting document is downloadable and also available on the Launch Academy Scotland website to support any applicants. Moving, in, moving ahead. So, once the application uh, deadline occurs on the 16th of August, the Offshore Renew Renewable Energy Catapult uh, will assess all written applications at stage one. So there'll be a couple weeks of, of assessment where we as the, as, as the Catapult will utilize a number of our experts throughout the organization to assess all of the written applications. And, we, and, and we'll essentially down select or shortlist all of those applications to, to um, take forward into the second stage. 
The second stage is an in-person pitch where all of the applicants that are shortlisted will be invited to come and pitch to a panel of assessors that uh, represent just uh, not just the ORI Catapult, but also our program sponsors that you've already just heard, heard from throughout this session. Um, that will occur, occur over a week. Um, the date is still to be confirmed as we've got some, some really exciting events. I know uh, the wind, wind Energy Hamburg is occurring late September. So we're, we're still wrangling some dates here, but we're, we're envisaged it will occur uh, late September. Following that week of pitches, we'll select a final cohort of 10 companies to participate in the program and we'll, they will be notified of their success in early October. Now, just to note, each of the pitches will be assessed um, around a number of areas, but primarily we'll be looking at the team and the resources you have to hand, the technology itself and how feasible or practical is it? Does it solve the challenge that the industry is facing and can you make it to market or can you, can you actually further develop it? What's the impact of that technology or the solution? If it were to be commercialized, we, we really want to hear more about that. And finally, there'll be a Q&A portion of any pitches that shortlisted applicants are invited to. Now that Q&A portion is, is a real chance for the panel of ORI Catapult and, and program sponsor representatives to get under the skin of your company, your solution, and get really understand uh, more about maybe how it might work or, or what your proposed business model is or, or challenge you in some of the of the information you provided throughout your pitch. Moving on, uh, so, so we'll have de determined a final cohort of 10 companies by early October and you'll all be uh, notified of your success. Um, if, if, if you were to be taken onto that final, uh, that, that, those final 10 companies that we're gonna be supporting and we'll be hosting an opening event for the Launch Academy Scotland programme in late October. Now, this is likely to be in the Central Belt in Scotland, but we're 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 open to, uh, we're still discussing uh, where the location might be. Uh, I suspect it might be Glasgow at the Ori Catapult at Scottish headquarters. Uh, so, so that's the application process. Please drop any questions into the chat throughout. Um, in terms of the program, uh, more holistically or broadly, taking a step back, um, it. It's a seven month program. We'll be hosting the open event in late October. Um, and then over the seven, month, seven months, there are three definite events where we'll be bringing all program stakeholders together in person to collaborate, meet and celebrate success, um, discuss challenges that each company has faced and, and further um, develop and strengthen links and, and provide networking opportunities uh, to the entire uh, core of companies, uh, and program partners, etc. There'll be a midterm event about approximately three to four months into the program before finally we close with a graduation event, I suspect at the end of April, 2025. So that's the broader delivery timeline. Finally, in terms of the program team, you, you've heard from Ravneet at the start of this session, setting the scene and talking about why we're finally doing a, a program in Scotland. For me, that's a, a it's been a a personal almost pet project or, or a real ambition to deliver a, a specific program to Scotland. Uh, I was born here, raised here, I live here. Uh, I'm really excited to be delivering a program of activity in Scotland specifically to really target the opportunity uh, that's represented by Offshore Wind. Um, please reach out to either myself or Ravni if you have any questions at all associated with the program or indeed any of the other project partners you've heard from throughout this session today. We now move into the Q&A. I know we've went over slightly and I can see Ravni has been answering some questions, but for the panel, I'd invite you all to turn your cameras back on. I can see many of the questions have been answered already, but what I'll do is I'll briefly go through the answered questions and, and verbally verbalize those answers so those that can't see the questions uh, uh, benefit. So it's, Anonymous attendee asked, is eligibility affected if we're in receipt of an OWGP award? And the answer is no. It, eligibility is not affected whatsoever by receipt of an OWGP award. However, businesses should be eligible to apply, uh, eligible to receive subsidy. That's an important one. You'll see that in the application form. We'll ask some questions around uh, subsidy control um, because there is an element of subsidy associated with this program. Um, so. 
Um, I'm sure many companies are already aware of that, but please do visit the application form or, or ping us some direct questions associated with that if you're unsure of your eligibility. Um, another question, anonymous attendee again. Hi, could you please confirm whether projects currently in the feasibility stage are eligible for this progr uh, program? Uh, Ravneet Sanzar, it depends on the stage of feasibility. The program aims to support ideas and businesses developing solutions at a technology re technology readiness level of three to seven. And there's a link. Uh, you, if, if you Google technology readiness levels, there's a lot of information you can find online. Um, please do drop us any line if you've got further questions associated with that. Um, moving on. How many have made it through on an open call in the past? Really good question. That was from a Darren. So thank you, Darren. Um, the answer is uh, each cohort has had one to two companies come through the open category. Some programs have had more, some less. Uh, I've certainly never seen a program of activity delivered where we've had zero companies come through the open category. Um, and often you find it's it's a really, really competitive category because it, it brings all sorts of solutions and companies through that uh, that, that call um, that are really, really exciting. And, and we've got a real commitment to running an open call in every program we deliver uh, now and in the future. So so yeah, if, if, if none of the specific themes or challenges really speak to you, your company or your solution, don't be disheartened. I'd, I'd really, really encourage you to apply nonetheless. Um, finally, a few more questions here. If applying for one more, more than one theme, do we include all of them in one single application or are there other forms we need to apply for each theme or different application if more than one theme? Um, the answer is, uh, so there's a, there's a, a multi-choice question in the application form where you can indicate as many or as few themes that are relevant to you as you like. So in one single form, you can indicate if you're relevant to one theme or 10, not that we have 10, but ju ju just, to, just to be aware. So yes, one, one application form is all that's required. Another question, what financial support is planned to be offered to applicants? Are there any specific restrictions? This is a good question and, and, and perhaps key to highlight. There's no monetary financial support or grants provided directly through the Launch Academy program. All of the support provided is in-kind support. Now, some of this is coming from our industry partners. Some is coming from our, our, our public sector partners and in the enterprise agencies and the ORI Catapult itself, we are a, a an entity with funding that comes from the, the, the public purse. So, so part of the funding, therefore, coming from our public partners and ourselves will be counted as a, as a subsidy, despite not being direct grant awards. Um, but there is no financial support directly injected into any businesses through this programme. OK, we've got six open questions here. I'm going to uh, welcome the panel to kind of answer these as, as best we can. Um, So what can we see here? So there's there's one, what support be, be given to model testing our concepts? Um, Ravneet, do you want to take that one maybe? If you're there. Um, so I think I understood the uh, question correctly and please uh, correct me and uh, send an updated uh, clarification to the question. If I'm understanding it from the perspective of testing the concept, Yes uh, and no. Uh, it is a very depends kind of an answer. Uh, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to clarify uh, this in just one one way. Um, we do provide the support uh, to, uh, we have a module called technology development module, which assesses the technology or where it is and the concept to un better understand at what state of development it is, and then tries to benchmark it with the current available options in the market. So that in principle enables and helps you to test the concept and further develop the uh, technology or do uh, understand the needs of validation and demonstration of that technology if required. Um, we provide the intelligence and the capability. We What we don't provide is we don't provide the access to the sites without no cost. So we in, it is case by case if the technology and the concept requires to be tested uh, in the uh, in the facilities which um, are based in blight or uh, in leavenmouth we have a, a a turbine 
working turbine where we do the testings, uh, we wouldn't be able to provide the access to that directly. However, we work with the cohort companies to identify the needs and create the projects and support the projects to find uh, the requirements and develop the technology further. Thank you, Ravni. Uh, so I hope that, that that answers that question as best we can, but please do drop further information uh, in the chat or email us if you've got further questions. Now, hyper aware of time, we're 12 minutes over as is, and I think our speakers may have other commitments too. Um, of the questions here, um, there, I'm going to quick fire answer these as best I can. So what is the overall time commitment? I'd estimate over the seven months, that's approximately two to three days a month at the most. Uh, Grace Ann, would you, as a, as a former alumni, is there anything you'd add to that? Um, yeah, I would say two, two to three days a month, but also it's kind of spread out so you don't feel like you're really committing as much time as that because they're often our sessions or, you know, in that kind of region. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, brilliant. And that's a really good point. And and additionally, um, I think two to three days a month is perhaps as uh, is is required or mandatory. Um, but there there's also the option to engage as much or as little as you like. So it's, often we'll find companies will engage much more than the minimum. Uh, just to note. Um, an honors attendee asks, I think we need to qualify our technology before developers will consider us. Will the program help us understand that process? Yes, absolutely. That's what the, the program is intended for. We'll directly provide support through our technology develop, uh, development uh, or demonstration support module. Um, that that'll hope that could take many forms. It's bespoke support uh, designed to assist companies at various stages with various solutions. And uh, um, ultimately we'll, we'll do our best to provide the support that you need at the time that you need it. So yes, short answer. Um, there's a question, is financial support in arrears or upfront as a grant or maybe a mix? I think we've answered this previously, but there's no financial direct financial support provided through the program. And finally, one more question here. Of the companies that have participated so far, how many pilots and or projects have come out from the program? Not sure of the number of companies to date, but to understand the pilot adoption rate percentage for startups, getting these pilots is key to growth, thus the question. And how also has it taken for these? I think that must be how long also has it taken for these pilots to get engaged? Thank you. Um, I can take that one, Chris. It's a really uh, good question. Yeah. So I think we don't have a number on top of our heads, but most of the companies we have supported have gone to uh, do pilots one way or the other. Uh, you have heard from Worldloom, uh, which has developed the technology, were able to raise, I think, in, in the mark of £7 million. Uh, they were also able to get a grant funding to further develop the technology. Um, not putting Worldloom on spotlight, but I think during the course of the program to further develop the pilot and uh, do the developments, uh, it just, just works out really greatly because you're constantly talking to the developers and the partners on the program. So uh, I would say as much as you want to progress, uh, this is this gives the platform peer-to-peer -peer learning opportunity, collaboration to enable those pilots and accelerate those pilot adoptions, uh, basically. I see Adam, your hands up. So I think I'll pass it on to you. Yeah, uh, just to say, Ravni, just to sort of back up that financial grant support, if they reach out to the economic agencies, there there is often grant financial support available for um, startup companies. So what I would say is reach out to us as well. If you're interested in that particular area, we can look to support you. I, I'd reiterate that. Uh, and, and just to state, I think you saw some impact stats at the beginning of the session that Ravni presented on, on perhaps grant funding one, investment raised, um, products commercialized. Many, if not all of those, to, to actually get get a product to market, you have to demonstrate it, validate it, prove it works, not just in the lab, but also in an operational and, and, and real environment. Um, and many of those uh, demonstrations have occurred or been enabled by Launch Academy or by the funding that uh, has been won by each of those companies. Um, we, as as, 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 a, as a Launch Academy program or, or, or as the already catapult, we've got some assets dedicated to R&D for testing and support that companies can access and certainly explore uh, utilizing. Um, in addition, industry partners here have all got a vested interest in seeing solutions make it to market. And for the right solution, 
that that uh, aligns with with their needs, then absolutely, there there is a a discussion to be had around pilots. Um, and that's uh, something ultimately that we all want to see. Be be you know, court companies or catapult program partners, whoever whoever we are, that's the ultimate win in our eyes. Um, now really really. We've got, had one more question come in right at the end here, and I think it's an important one. So let's answer this and we'll close. If an international company wants to participate alongside a Scottish partner, would there be any incentive or assistance to reloc relocate in Scotland? Um, now, this could be a good one for you, Adam, not to put you on the spot. Um, <laughs> but um, I think this is the kind of support that... Uh, e some Yes, that's right. So yes, Chris, there would be support for any international company that was looking to set up in Scotland that would go through our international arm, Scottish uh, Developments International, um, and we can put you in contact with the right person that can help um, whoever your partner is to set up in Scotland. Yeah, that's something we can offer. Amazing. And I think that one thing I'll add there is that this is not a program for projects for the funding. It is a program for companies. So if you are looking to relocate in the UK, we have in past had uh, three or four companies relocate to the UK uh, to attend the program. So we highly encourage and support uh, and open our uh, collaborations with our international partners as well, who can then help you to embed into the ecosystem in the UK as well. So definitely we encourage it. However, the caveat is the program is for the companies, not for projects to be funded. Thank you. Thank you, Ravni. Now, to the, to the pa not the panel, to all of our speakers today, thank you first and foremost so much for giving up your time, uh, for supporting the programme, for, for coming along to this webinar today. Thank you, Grace Ann from Verloom for, for joining us and, and speaking to your experience on the Launch Academy programme previously. Does anyone have any words they'd like to add just as we close here? Um, and if not, I think we can... We can we can end this session just only only twenty minutes over. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thanks. Take care.